Vulcan has arrived at Cape Canaveral, SpaceX have been dominating the week's launches and we're saying goodbye to China's rover. This is tomorrow Space News. Ship 25, next in line to the road to orbit, has been picked up and placed onto a test stand for testing. Older sibling Ship 22, on the other hand, has a slightly sadder fate as it has been taken to high bay 1 and promptly cut in half. The same can also be said for the no longer useful Booster 8, which has been rolled over to high bay 2, more commonly known as the Mega Bay. The current full stack, comprised of Ship 24 and Booster 7, has performed another partial fueling test, with both tanks on the Super Heavy booster being loaded with a relatively small amount of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. A Starlink dispenser has been spotted being installed into a Starship payload bay section. It's unsure exactly what Starship number this is for, so hopefully once some more components edge closer to the areas which the public can see, we'll get a better idea. This nose cone has also been seen outside, which is suspected to be for Ship 28. Could these components be related? Let's not forget about our Raptor friends out there, as many with the electrical thrust vector control have been seen inside Tent 1. These Raptors have been seen getting tested quite a lot on the stands at McGregor, and it's great to see them finally make it to the southern tip of Texas. And in slightly less exciting news, the front gate to the launch complex fell over. I just thought that was quite amusing, it's not really relevant at all, but it's funny. Keep an eye on the socials today as at the time of writing, the residents of Boca Chica Village have just been asked to evacuate for a full wet dress rehearsal of the Ship 24 Booster 7 stack. Knowing my luck, by the time this is fully uploaded to YouTube, there's a chance that the test could have already been concluded for hours. If everything goes to plan, a full stack covered in frost will be a beautiful sight to see. We reported last week that United Launch Alliance's rocket ship, transport ship with the first components for the maiden flight of their new Vulcan rocket had left for Florida and it is very exciting to say that it has arrived in Port Canaveral. Of course, we got another Tory time lapse which is what you were just watching. ULA CEO Tory Bruno also shared the current plan for Vulcan which has many tests coming up before it can perform its inaugural flight. First on the agenda is stacking the booster and the Centaur 5 upper stage. Once we have a full stack, ULA will redo the Pathfinder tanking tests on both stages, think of these like little initial tanking tests, before progressing onto a full wet dress rehearsal. If this all goes to plan, we'll then witness a quote unquote flight readiness firing before Vulcan rolls back to the vertical integration facility at Slick 41 for payload integration. And once this checklist is complete, Vulcan Certification Flight 1 will be ready for launch. A few months after the Perseverance rover, China's Zhurong rover landed on Mars in May 2021 and successfully began operations, becoming China's first rover on another planet. It has been wandering about collecting science and doing whatever else that rovers do for 12 months before entering standby mode in May 2022 to prepare for the Martian winter. Martian winters are always very harsh, especially on delicate electronics, but the engineers who create these rovers do whatever they can to prevent damage. It seems, however, that something has gone wrong with Zhurong, as it is not calling back to Earth to say that it has woken up. It was meant to start calling last month, but still, it's radio silence. There's a possibility that the weather on Mars is still too poor for enough electrical power to boot up the rover, but there's also the possibility that the rover experienced some kind of malfunction during its hibernation. That would mean a loss of Zhurong, but the engineers are holding out hope. As the warmer end of the Martian spring passes through, Zhurong could wake up, but there is a very good chance by now that it is sadly kaput. From landings on Mars to launches from Earth, it's time for space traffic. SpaceX have launched 100% of the orbital launches this week, starting off with GPS-3 Space Vehicle 6. This mission departed Space Launch Complex 40 at 12.24 Coordinated Universal Time on Wednesday, the 18th of January. The 4.3 metric tonne Global Positioning System Block 3 satellite was delivered to a 20,180 km circular medium Earth orbit, whilst the first stage, Booster B1077, landed on the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas in the Atlantic Ocean. This marked the end of the booster's second flight, making it one of the new kids in the Falcon fleet, but not the newest. The next day, Thursday the 19th, at 15.43 Universal Time, SpaceX launched the final flight of the week, carrying 51 Starlink satellites to Shell 2. Launching from Slick 4 East at the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, this flight was designated Group 2, Mission 4. 
The satellites were all successfully delivered to their initial 333 by 217 km 70 degree orbit and they'll be raising themselves up to a 570 km circular orbit over the coming weeks. In the meantime, Booster B1075 successfully concluded its inaugural mission, touching down on Of Course I Still Love You, which was positioned in the Pacific Ocean, west of Baja, California. Coming up over the next seven days, look out for Rocket Lab's maiden flight from the United States, which is currently scheduled at the time of rising for 2300 UTC. The Mitsubishi Heavy Industries H2A rocket in its 202 configuration will be launching IGS Radar 7 on Wednesday, and SpaceX will be launching yet another Starlink mission, Group 5 Number 2, on Thursday. Before we see what else you've got to look forward to this week, a big thank you to all of the Tomorrow Citizens who support the show financially once a month. Of course, monetary support is not required, but it is a big help in offsetting the cost of Station 204. If you want access to some exclusive perks, such as seeing Space News scripts as they're being written, head to join.tmro.tv or the Join button below and become a member for just 99 cents a month. There's plenty more to watch on tomorrow this week, as on Wednesday, Dr. Tamitha Scove will be back with another space weather update. On Friday, there could be a live show. It all depends on whether or not Jamie can make it to 204 on time. And I'll be back next Monday with some more news. But for now, thanks for watching this shorter episode of the news and goodbye.